Hi guys, it's Tao from Shine Bright Design and this is my final Inktober piece. Obviously, I tried my best to do Inktober and I think I did a better attempt than last year, definitely, with my tutorials. And I loved working with inks this month. I think it's a really great thing to do if you are not familiar with markers. And what I can tell you after using inks for a whole month for tutorials is I am definitely going to be using markers in collaboration with my tutorials now as well as pencils and the thing is it's because I've realized that markers give you a lot of saturation it really fills the base of your your paper and I'm using it as a base rather than using it to create details uh, I am someone who loves her pencils and even though I really did enjoy this ink month, Inktober, I still love my pencils. And what I'm going to do is in the future, I may be using markers to use for my base colors. And the reason why is because one, I'm using, um, I'm saving time and I'm using less pencil pigment. And it's really saving me money in that sense. So think of it as an ep economical point of view. So guys, I have really also enjoyed using chameleon markers and I am in love with them. Um, also because it's my biggest set, but one day guys, I will afford a larger Copic sketch set. That's my goal, ideally, but we'll see. So with this tutorial I'm doing, I'm doing... <laughs> It's one of her sugar, Jasmine Becker's Griffiths Sugar Skulls pieces or the Day of the Dead pieces. I can't pronounce the name and I won't pronounce the name because I know I'll butcher it as always. So this is one of her Day of the Dead pieces and I used the original painting as reference. So you see where I'm color blocking the blacks, the grays. I'm using the original picture to help me figure out where those areas are. And because of that, it really, because of that method, I have really achieved a really great heart. I love how I've done this color blocking and blending. And one, I, you could definitely do this with normal markers, but with copy, the chameleon markers, it is really easy because of the blending aspect of it. And I'm using my Posca pen to create highlights, which I love, which I am in love with. You know, guys, I think as a colorist, if you're really taking coloring really seriously or any type of art, you really need a Posca pen in your life. Uh, it just makes your life so much easier. Of course, when you first start using them, they're really liquidy. But once you, you know, you loosen it up a bit, you get that pigment running properly it becomes very opaque like the one you see now so because it's a heart I went in with a red marker and this is the RD5 from Chameleon it is a very beautiful color this is a burgundy color and I I am in love with this color I think it's one of my favorite colors and I use it I think in almost all my tutorials this month it's just a very lovely color It's very rich and yeah, it blends really nicely. Now, I think this is the RD3. And yes, this is the RD3. And I just went on top of that burgundy color and I blended it out. And then I went in with an RD4 to do the transition color because I felt like the RD3 to the RD5 was a bit too sudden. So I went in with a medium transition color to blend them together. And it really made things just blend and flow well. So, you know, I've said this before in my commentaries, a lot of people really aren't a fan of chameleons and it's because of that blending thing. People can't pick it up, but guys, the ink is really beautiful. If you're not going to use it for the blending aspect, get it for the whole color, the whole quality of the ink. I think it's lovely. And you know what? If you eventually pick up that blending thing, that's great. I don't use the blending aspect all the time. You don't see me using it throughout the whole tutorial. I'll only use it in bits where I feel it's necessary. So just because you have these chameleon markers doesn't mean you have to use it for the gradient 
technology that it's made with. But all in all, the ink is really beautiful, guys. It is really blended, really smooth, and it's very pigmented. And you know what's really great about the Chameleon Marker full set is that every color has its own family. So RD are the reds, OR are the oranges, YO are the yellows, GR are the greens, etc, etc, if you know what I'm saying. So they have numbering so that it's really easy for you to choose colors that blend together. For example, we use a rd5 and rd4 and an rd2 for this flower and obviously they come from the same family and they blend really well because of that now i'm assuming i'm hoping that if they create more colors they will continue that you know that type of naming aspect as they introduce more colors from say more reds or more families. I'm not sure how they're going to do it now because they have such a full set um, because they're only going with the reds, the oranges and the greens. Hopefully they'll just keep doing colors and numbers and stick to the RDs and the ORs and just throw in new numbers, you know, as it grows. I think that's the smartest thing, but I would love them to add more colors, guys. What they have so far is really good. Um, don't get me wrong, you can definitely like layer colors and mix colors together. Um, but it would be really cool for them to add new colors, definitely. So I went in with like a tropical color flower and I did this all in flat layout. So no, no gradients, no blending, no the gradient blending method that chameleon markers are known for, but I just did straight textures. And the reason why is I really want to show you guys that Chameleon Markers are great just on its own as a texter. And I'm really pushing for it, guys, because I have see so many comments online about you guys just hating on it because you don't like the blending, the blending aspect because you can't pick it up. But it takes practice. It really takes practice, guys. I've been using these for a month now and I've kind of got my hands on it. I think I have a kind of intermediate, um, you know, level of, you know, skill for this. Definitely when I was a beginner, I couldn't pick it up. If you look at my demo video, that was my first time using it raw. Like that was like a raw first time using it. And you can see that I didn't pick it up as easily. But look at me now. Look at it. It's looking good. And I love it. And I think you guys will like it too. That's why I'm saying like, don't give up. Don't, don't just send it back and give up on it. Have a go. Try it out for a while. Use it for a few times. You know, you'll get it. Definitely. Follow some tutorials and you'll definitely like get better and better. So these eyes were my favorite piece or favorite part of the the thing and I love big eyes guys like I love I love Jasmine Becker when she does big eyes in her illustrations I think eyes just capture people so when you have big eyes you can do a lot of detail and for me I was thinking oh, I wish I had pencils I wish I could make these eyes crazy with with pencils but I had markers so I had to work my way around it and it was really different for me. Like I was thinking, am I going to be able to create crazy looking eyes with markers? And it was a challenge. And it was all about creating different levels of ink and saturation and just create that texture like in the eyes. So I did the eyelashes here. You can see me going in with details with this Nuni Pin 0.1 fine liner. And I'm outlining the eyes, I'm doing the lashes, and I don't know, like it just felt it just felt too flat. I felt those eyelashes were too flat and it needed something. So I put in my Posca pins. And this is a Dare the Dead um piece. 
and people who dress up as Day of the Dead, you'll see online all those makeup tutorials. Those girls just, they're so extra. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to put these little, you know, white dots on the lashes because people who do Day of the Dead makeup are extra. So this, this character can be extra. So I did it. Um... Maybe one day I'm going to figure out how I'm going to make the eyelashes look like it has glitter on the eyelashes. But so far, these dots are still quite good. Now, this mask or this painting is white. She's supposed to have like a white face, but I wanted to use blue as a shadow. I didn't want it to appear like it was a blue mask, um, but maybe it does. Who knows? But I was using the blue here as a shadow. Hopefully you see it as a shadow. But if you see it as a blue mask, it still looks good. So I'm not fussed. So in this part, I'm using the gradient method. And I'm also using the marker flat. If you guys want to know the paper I'm using, it's called Express It Blending Cards. And these cards, you can find at Officeworks in Australia and you can find them on and they just blend really nicely and they're just smooth. The thing about um, blending cards is that they have to be acid free and they need to be smooth. And this paper is just does the job. But yeah, I don't really work with many marker papers, but this paper so far is something that I'm in love with. But guys, if you have any marker suggest marker paper suggestions, comment below, tell me about it. I would love to know. I always love some new papers to explore so guys this is me also doing the skin and I actually used all the neutral skin tones in the chameleon marker set I use a combination of blending and flat marker and I use pretty much all the colors to create these shadows So this hair with markers was very challenging. Normally when you see me do hair tutorials, I go in with a pencil and create those hair strokes. But with markers, it's quite difficult because one, you can't change the, you can't change the pressure of how the ink applies to the paper. So what I had to do was I created these I blocked it off and I did the gradient method and then I went in with another marker. This marker is a Faber-Castell pit pen. Now these pit pens are known for their fine brush tips and what's really great about brush tips is is that you can control you can control how fine it gets and then all I had to do was, knowing how these markers or these pens work from Faber-Castell is, I just laid them over and over on top of each other. And as I've said before, the more areas that you saturate with that same colour ink, the darker it gets. So obviously the highlight points are the lightest because it has less saturation of ink. So after I achieved the hair, I went in with the nude skin tones again and blended things out. Now looking at things now, I wish I went in more with that Faber-Castell pit pen. I might do it later off screen. And But if you guys want to, go in more, add more layers, add more saturation to that hair. Anyway guys, I really enjoy doing this tutorial. I think it's my favorite piece. Those eyes are amazing. The heart is spectacular. And if you guys have liked this video, like, comment, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And press that bell button on my channel so you don't miss out on any and get notifications every time I release. So guys, that's all from me today. That's all of Inktober. I hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.